me since 2000, so I've been practicing as a defense attorney for about 14 years. Uh, when I graduated from law school at 29, I did three years in the DA's office in Philadelphia, and then I did about 18 months in um, down in Fulton County. I'm going to start this thing off in a way that I like starting it off, uh, in a way that sort of everybody can understand by having somebody read for me first, and then I'll sort of explain to you how life goes. Because I saw a little bit about the debate, and people talk about rich and poor, and I don't even know if we know what we talk about when we say rich and poor and middle class. So we're gonna talk about something real simple that everybody can understand. So I'm gonna have you read. You'll begin reading for me. Just make sure you read loud enough for everybody to hold on to that, just in case he's messing up the reading part. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, side Maisie, a lazy bird hatching an egg. I'm tired and I'm bored and I have kinks in my leg. From sitting, just sitting here day after day, it's work, how I hate it, I'd much rather play. I'd take a vacation and fly off for a rest if I could find someone to stay on my nest. If I could find someone, I'd fly away free. Then Horton, the elephant, passed by her tree. Hello, called the lazy bird, smiling her best. You've nothing to do and I do need a rest. Would you like to sit on the egg in my nest? The elephant laughed. Why, of all silly things, I haven't feathers and I haven't wings. Me on your egg? Why, that doesn't make sense. Your egg is so small, ma'am, and I'm so immense. Tut, tut, answered Maisie. I know you're not small, but I'm sure you can do it. No trouble at all. Pause. Does everybody know the story? Okay, keep going. Just sit on it softly. You're gentle and kind. Come be a good fellow. I know you won't mind. I can't, said the elephant. Please, beg the bird. I won't be gone long, sir. I give you my word. I'll hurry right back. Why, I'll, I'll never be missed. Very well, said the elephant, since you insist. You want a vacation, go fly off and take it. I'll sit on your egg and I'll try not to break it. I'll stay and be faithful, I mean what I say. Doodle doo, sang out Maisie and floated away. Hmm, the first, the first thing to do, murmured Horton. Let's see. The first thing to do is prop up this tree and make it much stronger. That has to be done. Before I can get on it, I must weigh a ton. Pause. Go ahead. You pick oh. up. <clears throat> then carefully, tenderly, gently he crept up the trunk to the nest where the little egg slept. And he sat all that day and he kept the egg warm and he sat all that night through a terrible storm. It poured and it lightened, it thundered, it rumbled. This isn't much fun, the poor elephant grumbled. I wish you'd come back because I'm cold and I'm wet. I hope that Maisie Bird doesn't forget. But Maisie by this time was far beyond reach, enjoyed the, enjoying the sunshine far off in Palm Beach. And having such fun, such a wonderful rest, decided she'd never go back to her nest. So Horton kept sitting there day after day, and soon it was autumn, the leaves blew away. And then came the winter, the snow and the sleet, the, iceling, the icicles hung from his trunk and his feet. But Horton kept sitting and said with a sneeze, I'll stay on this egg and I won't let it freeze. I meant what I said and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful 100%. So poor Horton sat there the whole winter through and then came the springtime with troubles anew. His friends gathered round and they shouted with glee, look, Horton the elephant's up in a tree. They taunted, they teased him, they yelled, how absurd, old Horton the elephant thinks he's a bird. No matter what happens, this egg must be tended, but poor Horton's troubles were far, far from ended. For while Horton sat there, so faithful, so kind, three hunters came sneaking up softly behind. But the men didn't shoot, much to Horton's surprise. They dropped their three guns, and they stared with wide eyes. Look, they all shouted, can, this, can such a thing be? An elephant sitting on top of a tree? It's strange, it's amazing, it's wonderful, new. Don't shoot him, shoot him, we'll catch him. That's just what we'll do. Let's take him alive while he's terribly funny. We'll sell him back home to a circus for money. Sold to a circus, then week after week, they showed him to people at 10 cents a peak. They took him to Boston, to Kalamazoo, Chicago, Weehawken, and Washington too. To Dayton, Ohio, St. Paul, Minnesota, to Wichichi, Kansas, to Drake, North Dakota. And everywhere thousands of folks flocked to see and laugh at the elephant up in a tree. For Horton grew sadder the farther he went, but he said as he sat in the hot, noisy tent, I meant what I said and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful, 100%. Oh, you pick up. <clears throat> then one day, the circus show happened to reach a town way right down south, not so far from Palm Beach, and dawdling along way up high in the sky, who of all people should chance to fly by? 
Pause. You reading to yourself or does he have to hear you? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> but that old good for nothing bird run away mazy, still on vacation and still just as lazy. And spying the flags and the tents just below, he, she sang out, what funny, while I'll go to the show. And she swooped from the clouds through an open tent door. Good gracious, gasped Maisie, I've seen you before. Poor Horton looked up with his face white as chalk. He started to peep, but before he could talk. There rang out the noises, the noisiest ear-splitting squeaks, squeaks from the egg that he sat um, for 51 weeks. Uh, thumpy, thumping, a bumping, a wild, alive scratching. My egg, shouted Horton. My egg, why it's hatching. But it's mine, screamed the bird when she heard the egg crack. The work is all done. Now she wanted it back. It's my egg, she sputtered. You stole it from me. Get off of my nest and get out of my tree. Poor Horton, poor Horton back down with a sad, heavy heart. That's it. That's all we need to go there. But it's mine, screamed the bird. Rip off that last page, whoever has it. Just share that with your, with your classmate. It's mine. It's mine. And then we all know what happens, right? The police arrive. The police arrive. What does Maisie tell the police? Let's hear it. Raise your hand. What does Maisie tell the police? Horton stole the egg. Horton stole the egg. Now we all know that's a lie. Horton stole the egg. That is exactly what she's going to tell the police. The police officer is then going to arrest Horton. And the prosecutor is going to send the case to the grand jury, and it's going to be the state versus Horton with Maisie as a witness in the case. We all know it's a lie. When you pass the picture around, you see that Maisie's face when she says it's mine, it's mine, what do you see? What do you see in Maisie's face? Those who had the pictures in front of them, what's in Maisie's face? We know it's a lie. What's Maisie's face tell you? She's upset. Upset? What else is she? She's furious. Furious? What else is she? Surprised. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. That's what the picture shows you. That's how you know that it's going to be a lie. Part of it comes from the face that you see on Maisie. Part of it comes from page three. Who's got the paper? What's it say on page three? What's it, pay, what's it say on page three, bottom of page three? Read it out. Okay. I won't be gone long, sir. I won't be going long. <laughs> I won't be going long. Go ahead. Okay. I'll hurry, I'll hurry right back while I'll never be missed. That's a straight lie. So even if we can't tell from Maisie's face, we can tell from what Maisie has told Horton in the beginning. Maisie's going to tell a lie. She's going to lie to the officer. She's going to lie to the prosecutor. If that's not enough to convince you, who has the statute on abandonment? Raise your hand. It's highlighted. Oh, what do you hand me? What's it say? What's the punishment for leaving your children and leaving the state? You can read the whole thing or just tell you. Just that portion uh, of it. It says, if you leave it in an intended condition, uh, the state will come. He guilty of a felony punishable by imprisonment for not less than one year nor more than three years. So if there's any doubt about Maisie telling a lie because Maisie's just a liar, or is there any, well, you know, I'm a good person, so when I look at Maisie, I project good feelings onto Maisie. Maisie doesn't want to go to prison for one to three years. So Maisie's going to tell a lie, and Maisie's going to stay with that lie. Horton is going to be indicted. What's Horton going to be indicted for? Who has the kidnapping? Okay, let's read that. Um, the definition? Yeah, kidnapping. A person commits the offense of kidnapping when such person abducts or steals away another person without lawful authority or warrant and holds such other person against his or her will. What's the punishment? A person convicted of the offense of kidnapping shall be punished by one, imprisonment for not less than 10 nor more than 20 years if the kidnapping involved a victim who was 14 years of age or older. 
Two, imprisonment for life or by a split sentence that is a term of imprisonment for not less than 25 years and not exceeding life imprisonment, followed by probation for life if the kidnapping involves a victim who is less than 14 years of age. What's Horton facing? Less than 14. Less than 14? The age is cracked. Got to be less than 14. So what's he facing? Life in prison. In Georgia, that's 30 years before you're eligible for parole. Off of Maisie's lie. Now, why is the prosecutor who sends it to the grand jury going to believe Maisie at first? Why? It's right. Huh? It's right. How do you know that? How, how's the prosecutor know that? The bird comes out. Huh? The bird will that's all wrong. Because in the story, in the story, what hatches is an elephant with wings. That's what hatches. An elephant with wings. I asked you if you knew the story. I'm like, yeah, we know the story. You sort of know the story. An elephant with wings. The process. What's Maisie's last name? L U N. Last name unknown. It's going to be hard for you to convince a prosecutor that you, as an elephant or any other person, would, would have so much loyalty to a person whose last name you don't even know. And that's how Macy's gonna come at it. Why would I have left him, why would I have left the elephant on top of the egg? What? I don't even know Horton. He doesn't even know me. Ask him what my last name is. He doesn't even know me. And Horton, do you know what Macy's last name is? No, I don't know. So why would you have sat on an egg for, for months and months and months? That's going to convince the prosecutor. Oh no, we got to present this case to the grand jury. Kidnapping. State versus Horton. What's my job now? Either, either Horton's family brings me some money or the state says you got to What's work. my job? Keep Horton out of prison. Keep Horton out of prison. Prison, what's he facing? Prison for what? Prison for what? Life. That's 30 years. When's he eligible for parole? 30 years. What if he does real good behavior and gets a college degree? 30 years. What if he's like, he finds God and he converts some other people and he turns serial rapists into nuns? 30 years. <laughs> 30 years. No matter how you slice it up, it's going to be 30 years. Who do I have to call on Horton's behalf when the prosecutor plays stupid? And what they not, the prosecutor's not deliberately stupid. Let me just tell you that right now. Prosecutor just clueless, just like a lot of you. You went to school, your parents protected you, you school, 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 and then you got, and now, and now, what? I went to University of Virginia and I got out, clueless. You know absolutely nothing about nothing. You know nothing about buy here, pay here lots. You know nothing about drugs, crack, sexual deviancy. You know nothing about nothing. And they give you the power to present a case to a grand jury, and go on into a courtroom and put 12 people in the box and somebody, send somebody away for 30 years. I had that same power. I had that same power. Clueless. I had maybe a few more clues because my mother put me out at 20 and I was living sort of as an adult, 20, 21, 22. I, but, I, but at 48, I could still tell you, at 29, I was clueless. Prosecutors clueless. So who do I have to call to prove Horton's innocence? Who do I have to call? Who would you call? Crying. He facing life and nobody got no answers. Life. Prison. Oh, oh, uh, let me rephrase it. Anything more than 10 in Georgia, you go into a maximum security prison. That means other people in there for 30 years. That means that this is sort of like the new life. These aren't pleasant people, and they need to establish a new hierarchical order in the prison. You know what that means? It's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. Anybody got any ideas who they're going to call as a witness now? No ideas. How about the people that read? Who do we know has seen Horton in the tree? Who? The hunters. The hunters. We're going to try to get in touch with the hunters. Why are the hunters going to be difficult to find? Because they don't know their names. No, 
not because they exploited the whole situation. They're the ones that snatched them up and brought them. Sure, I could call a crack addicted prostitute to the stand and testify. I could find her. But what's her credibility going to be? Even if she says exactly what I want her to say, who's going to believe her? This is what we talk about. We talk about real life now. Not some imaginary rich or poor middle class. We talk about real life now. The hunters are the exploiters. They're the ones that end up taking Horton to where Horton gets sold in the first place. If you find them, they do have a measure of credibility, but it's going to be difficult to find them. And when you find them, they, you don't really know what they're going to say because they're going to dance a little bit. What do I mean dance? They're going to try to make themselves look like non-exploiters. They're going to try to make themselves look good because they got sort of a seedy role in this whole thing. Who else can we call? Call the circus people. I like the circus people. I like the circus people. You can call the circus people. The circus people are less exploitive and they know for a fact that Horton was where? In all the cities that she named. And there was no Maisie to be found. So I like the circus people. I like the circus people. They may be a little tough to catch up with and of course they're not going to want to come to court. Why? Because they're part of a circus and you know one minute they're in Kalamazoo and one minute they're in Ohio. They don't want to come to court. And if you're trying to get uh, an out-of-state an out of state jurisdiction like Ohio or California or Oklahoma to catch up with them, to give them a subpoena to make them come to Georgia, you're going to chase that tail for a while. I'm just telling you. But you can do that. The circus people. Who else? How about Horton's friends? Remember now, Horton's friends were laughing at him when he was sitting up in the tree. Horton's friends. And of course, there's going to be a little bias with Horton's friends because they're going to say, well, this is friends, this is friends. But it's enough of them for those of you who read. There are about five or six or seven people there. Those are good, except what? What's the problem with Hick Front? What's the problem with getting Horton's friends in? Yeah, everybody don't remember the story. They sort of went over some mountains. I think it's Africa. Well, it's only two, it's only two places that they're elephants, right? I mean, we all know this, right? But only two places they're elephants. South America and Australia. No, that's wrong. <laughs> huh? <clears throat> Africa and Asia. Africa and Asia. Where does Maisie see Horton sitting on the egg? In Florida. In Florida. This is, oh, 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 you thought you knew the story. You didn't really know the story. Elephants are only in Asia and Africa. Doesn't matter if it's in Asia or Africa where Horton begins to sit on this egg. We got to fly to friends from Asia or from Africa to bring them here to ultimately testify on Horton's behalf. There's also the possibility of you calling some of the spectators who were at the circus. Although Horton's friends will be biased, obviously the spectators that saw Horton for all these months and months and months are. are he doesn't know them, they don't know him. They'll come and say, no, he took care of the bird ultimately um, when, um, when there was no Maisie around. Who's the prosecutor going to call as the first witness? We make our opening statements. The prosecutor says Horton is a kidnapper. He's stolen the egg. You know, and this is why you have to use all my energy. This is why I don't drink alcohol. I got to use all my energy just to stay calm because it's just pure foolishness. I got to use all my energy to stay calm before I deliver my opening statement. After we deliver the openings, who's the first witness the state is going to call? Maisie. Maisie. And here is where all of your passion and all of your training and all of your bias and everything comes in. I love bullies. Always love bullies. Always will love bullies, because bullies make you dig down deep inside and figure out who you are. So all this anti-bullying thing, that's not really me. I want you to have a little bit of bully, because I need you to sometimes stand up for what you believe in. Now Maisie's on the stand. Maisie is a what? M Maisie's a what? A bully. I don't know if Maisie's a bully. I don't know. I don't know. I know how I'm going to treat Maisie, but let's figure out what Maisie is first. What's Maisie? Crazy. That's the question. You may treat her like she's crazy. 
in which case you might treat her with kid gloves. You may say she's obviously traumatized, she might have postpartum, not quite sure what's going on, she might need meds. So I'm going to talk to her <laughs> real nice. What else is Maisie? Maisie's a liar. That's all I understand. That's all I understand. And I'm going to hit Maisie straight in the mouth, figuratively. And I'm going to keep hitting her in the mouth until she's flat. That's it. That's different from if you think she's crazy. If she's crazy, I just keep asking her questions and pointing out to the jury she's crazy. I don't have to do anything to her. I just have to let her be herself. I'm Jesus. Okay, tell me how you did the trick with the wine and the water. I always had a question about that because I understood. Did you turn all the wine in the water or just part of the wine in the water? No, no, no. I turned it all in the water and I did it with the index finger and the thumb. I'm good with that. See, that's a whole different conversation when Maisie's crazy than when Maisie's a liar. First, you, I'm going to lock down Maisie's testimony. Where were you when the egg first disappeared? Did you make a report to the police or the authorities that the egg disappeared? When the egg disappeared, what, tell me how exactly uh, the egg was taken. Like, were you present when the egg was taken? Were you traumatized? Did, did they beat you up when they took the egg? I want to lock all that down. I want to lock all that down. Then we're going to get into how much effort she has put into finding the egg. Who she has gone to, what investigator she's gone to, to find the egg. Who can come in and tell us that you have spoken to them about searching for the egg for months and months and months? Who do I want on the jury? Before we even make opening statements, I'm already picking a jury that's going to like what I'm going to do to Maisie. Because what I'm going to do to Maisie not going to be nice. I'm just going to tell you. It's all ugly. But fortunately for me, the law allows me to do it. That's the beauty of it. The law says you can do it. Do your thing. I'm going to be picking parents. Parents, people that love their children. Love their children and love justice. That's who I'm going to pick. And I'm going to put them on the jury. And I'm not going to... Now listen, if I want to prove that Maisie's crazy, I might put some more therapists on there. I might put, you know, uh, um, some people, some, some, some computer people who are very technical, who understand, you know, oh, something else is going on here. But for what I'm going to do to Maisie, because I know Maisie's coming, I'm going to put parents on there. And once I establish that Maisie does not care for the egg and did not chase after the egg, they're going to be waiting for me to do what? To cut Maisie's head off. So the law allows me to do it, and I pick the jury that's going to tell me what? Cut her head off! Cut her head off! Get her! Get her! Nice! Nice! So when the judge wants to rein me in, and every now and then they want to rein me in, I say, ooh, this is getting too, this is too much. This is too much. I want to have a jury that's sort of like, Right on the edge. Because then the judge will look at the jury, and the judge might be, well, I sort of want to rein them in, but the jury looks interested. So maybe I'll let them go a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Am I going to be able to prove that Mace is a liar? Let me rephrase that. Do you think that you can prove that Mace is a liar? Horton's facing 30 years in prison. This is it. <laughs> This can't be his legal staff. <laughs> this can't be his legal staff. Can you prove that? That I'm not sure if I can prove that he facing 30 years in the penitentiary. You don't know who the witness is. Let's say we got. The, let's say we get two of the three. Let's say we get two of the three spectators. Hunter, friends, friends, spectators. Let's say we get two of the three. We got four different groups. We got two of the three groups. Can you prove that Maisie is a liar? You think you can prove she's a liar? You think you're going to be able to prove that Maisie's a liar? Or are you just going to go into closing argument hoping that the jury doesn't find Horton not guilty? You go, I'm, I'm hoping they find him not guilty. I'm, I'm just hoping. Or are you going to be able to prove it with that? What do you think? You can prove it. 
You should be able to. Now here's the real question. Can you prove it with just Maisie on the stand? Because my case is over once. Oh, what? I can't prove Maisie a lot. My case is going to be over once Maisie gets off the stand. The case is, is, all the rest of it is just fluff. All the rest of it is me just saying, relax. Don't blow it with the jury. Listen, humility, be calm. I'm going to prove the whole case with Maisie. Maisie's going to stay on the stand. How long? How much time we got? How much time we got for a debate? I got forever. I got forever. I got forever. So the first four hours, <laughs> the first four. Oh, no, we, it's not going to be It's not gonna be a straight, it's not an endurance contest. If it was an endurance contest, I would win all my cases. <laughs> it's not an endurance contest. The, the judge is going to take a break after about an hour, and then another hour, and then maybe 75 minutes. It won't be a straight endurance contest. But those, those breaks won't help. Because in that first hour, I'm going to beat her up enough where when she, get, when she gets off the stand and goes to the bathroom, she's just only going to be dreading what's coming in the next hour. And then when she takes that next break and she comes back, oh my God, oh my, what, what? We're going to slice and dice her for four hours. That's four hours. Then we're going to get to the heart of the matter in the last two. She's going to be on the stand for six hours. I already know. Six hours. But you don't have six hours of questions to ask her. You're right. I only got about 90 minutes of questions to ask her. But I'm creative. So my 90 minutes of questions is going to stretch into six hours. And I'm never, it's never going to appear that I'm asking the same question twice. Because I can't ask the same question twice. I, the, judge, the light was red. What color was the light? Objection, judge. Ask and answer. Objection, redundant. Oh, no. It won't be like that. Did you see the light? Did you see the top of the light? Did it was it light with like the cones or was it the flat light? Was it the light that's lateral or the light that's... What? <laughs> Things is going to be up there for six hours. Four, just to soften it up. Most people take about 90 minutes. And after you hitting them to the body for 90 minutes, they normally start to just say whatever you want them to say. Isn't it true you like frog legs? I do like frog legs. Isn't it true you like frog legs dipped in chocolate? I do like frog legs. <laughs> whatever you want me to say to you to just let me get off the stand, you should be able, with the facts that you have in the case, as, you, as, you, as the case was read to you, as you understand the case, to be able to with confidence believe that the trial is going to be a not guilty when you finish with Maisie. The prosecutor is going to then call a few other witnesses. They may call uh, somebody else that was in Palm Beach with Maisie to say that Maisie was injured and recovering. See, you won't know that that witness is going to say that until later. But by the time you finish with Maisie, is anybody going to put any credibility in that person? The person that says, I saw Maisie in Palm Beach or, 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 or in Daytona Beach and Maisie, it looked like her wing was injured. That's Maisie's friend. And, and that's why she didn't go back. Are you for real? We don't even care what he says. Why? Because I told you, we already locked up what, what happened with the egg and Maisie's efforts to try to find the egg with Maisie. So whatever that witness tries to say is not going to hurt us. And then, of course, they're going to call a police officer who says, Court looked real scared. He was real scared when I came up on the scene. That's to try to establish that he was guilty of something. That's how it goes. Listen, that's how it goes. That's exactly how it goes. After the state presents their case, you have an opportunity after you file a motion for a directed verdict. And that's not going to be granted in this case. Maybe, maybe the judge has enough, enough courage to say, you know what, this case is nonsense. Directed verdict, case over, this is not even going to the jury. But as long as Maisie swore to tell the truth, no matter what I do to Maisie, no matter how much I beat up on Maisie, unless Maisie says it's a lie on the stand, that case is going to then come to me and I'm going to have to present these witnesses. Once I finish presenting my witnesses, the state and I will both have a chance to get up and make our closing arguments. In a case like this, there wouldn't be any closing argument. Of course there wouldn't. Of course there would. I've tried a case where the, the victim has recanted, told the prosecutor it never happened on Thursday, came to court, told the jury during the trial it never happened, it was all made up, and the prosecutor went right in the closing. Now, the prosecutor telling me in the hall, 
I don't think I'm gonna win, but you're gonna try to win, right? You're gonna try to win, right? And that's why I'm gonna try to knock you out. And right there, they right in there, he's now saying what? I lied. I lied. I lied. But the prosecutor's now in it. And I don't know if that's that prosecutor or the supervisor, but they're not just gonna let that case go like that. We're gonna finish it. We pick the jury, let the jury say not guilty. We're not gonna drop the charges in the middle of the charges. Yes? Do, do, do they sometimes keep saying they're lying? Like, do you think she might keep, like, you keep asking her? And Who, Maisie? Yes. Maisie's never going to admit the truth. Why? Page three, Maisie's a liar. And Maisie's facing one to three in prison her own self. If Maisie admits she's a liar, is she going to get the egg back? Absolutely not. The child's going to defects. The egg's going to defects. So she's never going to get the child back. So she's got to know that. There's got to be somebody having a conversation with her saying, listen, even if you say, you know, it's all a big mistake, the child's going to defects. And you're going to prison. <laughs> you're going to prison. So Maisie's going to maintain that lie all the way up to the end. She's got to. She's got to. What's the story about? What's, it, what's really at the core of the story? It's just the beauty of Seuss. Love Seuss. What's the story really about? The story's really about laziness and diligence. That's really what the story is about. And when you look at the story, you say, well, Maisie's the lazy one and Horton is the diligent one, um, even to the point of Horton being, I don't even know if the word's inconvenience. I don't even know what the word is. It's, it's the Latin class, right? I don't know what the word is when you are so selfless that, that you agree to sit on an egg and for the next six or seven or eight months, that becomes your whole life. Your word, listen, I like integrity. I like to believe I like to keep my word. I'm pretty good about keeping my word. Be impeccable with your word. I'm pretty good about that. But I can't tell you I'm going to stay on that egg for nine months. You think the story is about laziness and diligence. And I would, I would contend it is a story about that, but it's not, it's not the story that you would assume it is in terms of it being about two people. When I read the story, for me, the story is about is about what goes on in your own head. There's two yous. There's the you that wants to sit back and relax, iPod, and, and uh, uh, Real Housewives. And then there's a part of you that really wants to be able to walk around with the Harvard, Stanford, MIT jacket saying, I'm in. And those two are always in conflict. The other part. We know what the lazy part is saying. Well, how do you know you're going to get in? How do you know you could be doing all this for nothing? How do you know you're going to get in? And the other part saying, listen, I got to do whatever I got to do. I got to sit on this egg however long I got to sit on this egg. I got to do what I got to do. And the other part saying, come on. What? Be for real. Like, all our friends. The other part is battling. That's the battle. That's the battle. But I don't see it as being a battle between two forces. I see it as being a battle ultimately in your head. Any questions? Oh, is that? Oh, nice. Look at that. I'm over. I can't believe I'm over. I'm over. 33 minutes. I did that pretty fast. Any questions? Yes. For a closing statement, what are some things that you think are really important? For me, for me, the closing statement comes out of the cross-examination. Anybody can do my closing argument because all you have to do is mark the points where the jury said, oh, mark that down, or the jury busts out laughing. <laughs> mark that down, and then all you have to do is just put those, those, those events. Those, that's what they call. Juries know, juries suspect that they're not supposed to laugh. I always tell juries if something is funny, laugh because I don't want you to hurt yourself. Like this funny, like a sneeze and <laughs> don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. If something funny, just laugh. Take down the moments when the jury has a, an uncontrollable visceral reaction. String them together in a, in, a, in a coherent way with your theme being we gotta let Horton go. And that's your closing. The closing really writes this. 
I, I shouldn't probably. The closing, in this case, the closing will write itself. Typically, I spend probably 20 times more time on the closing than I do the opening, because the opening is, I really don't know what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, because even if they say red in the hallway, they might say green here on the stand, so I really don't know what's going to happen. We're going to see what's going to happen. I'm going to do some cross-examination. I hope you enjoy the show. They don't allow me to say show. Well, for me, it's a show. They don't allow me to say that just yet. I uh, hope you enjoy the show, and then we go sit down. Closing is about making sure you remember everything that every person said. They normally not going to be this easy for me. I got to remember everything everybody said, and then I've got to try to put the nuances on what they said in a way that's most beneficial to me. And if I can string enough of those together, I'm in good shape. So typically the closing, I would say it's probably like an hour and a half to two hours per day. So if the trial is three days, it's a six day closing. If it's a week, then it's gonna be probably 10 hours of me working on the closing. Cause I gotta remember exactly what they said and make sure I put it in exact order. Uh, because what's the, what's the, what, what's, what happens if I get a stomach ache and I don't prepare the closing? What, what happens to Horton? Jail. He go, oh, no, he don't go to jail. Jail is where you wait before you go to trial. Prison is where you go after the jury says guilty. He not going to prison, because I don't think he even going to remember prison. He going for 30 years. So it's no stomach ache. So if you're like, oh, I don't feel well today. Oh, you probably not going to make, make a good litigator, because there's no not feeling well today. There is upright and there's passed out. And if you're not passed out, then you're good to go. You good to go. Any other questions? That's it. No other questions. We want to thank you. I'm tired. You guys are tired. You guys are tired. Okay, okay. That's no problem. Well, you, or you can contact me through the website. If you stick my name on the website, I have the website. I answer a lot of questions on the website. Um, uh, the trial process, how to pick a good lawyer, what the punishments are for different crimes. Uh, sexting is the hot thing. Uh, I say bullying is the hot thing. You know, this whole bullying thing. Like I just heard two minutes ago when you said they're not used, allowed to use red markers because that's bullying. and That's just pure <laughs> foolishness. Bullying is one thing from a guy that's raised in the 60s. I leave the school and I'm looking for the guy that's bigger than me that's gonna beat me up and take my money. If it's not that, it's not bullying. All the rest of that, well, he's bullying me online. Not if you can press the off button, you can. So, so they're, 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 and, and this is what you, you, you'll begin to understand that later on. There's some consequences to your life being made comfortable. There's some consequences to that because uh, as you move forward in your life, there will be some bosses that will be just like bullies. And until you're ready to open up your own firm, you got to deal with that. You just got to deal with it, you know? Just got he's not going to be hitting you, taking your lunch money, but he's not going to be pleasant. He's not going to be pleasant. That's the point. Okay? Thank you very much. No offense or whatever it is he's accused of. He's admitted to that. The issue is not, the issue is not, um, necessarily defending them. The issue is what's the proper resolution? Do they have a mental health problem? Is there some other thing going on? You got to pay for ultimately what you did, yeah. but the question becomes how? Is it is it is, is five years enough? Yeah. Is 15 years enough? So if the prosecutor says the only possible punishment is 30 years in prison, then you have to go to trial and make them prove their case. Yeah. Not because, not because he shouldn't face any consequence, uh -huh. but because the consequence, the, the fairer consequence would probably be five or six or seven years, and they want 30, and, and I can't give them 30. So they can come and take 30, but I can't give them 30. Yeah. yeah. So that's how it works out. Unreasonable prosecutors. Yeah, unreasonable prosecutors. Yes, you have a question? Yeah, I do. I was wondering, what do you think of like, um, death sentences? You know when people like, go in and they kill like, people, like, do you think they should go to prison for life, or do you think they should be executed? Well, this, this is what I say. The punishment of prison is the, the fact that you have to sit someplace and think about what you've done. That's the punishment of prison. For, for maybe most of the people here in the class and people that have developed their mind, prison is not going to be as much a punishment 
as it would be for the person who's been running around, not reflected on their life at all. The person that like never eats dinner at the same place twice, never wakes up. That person's more like um, a free spirit. So when you lock them up, they literally go crazy. So if you want to say what's the punishment for them, it's, it's keeping them locked up. I'm not really a big death penalty guy, you understand? It's not because I'm liberal, I'm just not a big death penalty guy. Um, I think it's sort of arbitrary Sorry. who you pick. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's it's uh it's to me it's very arbitrary who they decide. Who they a statement. Do you think it's wise to go through and be like, you heard Maisie say this and this and this. Do you think that's good or no? I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I personally don't summarize statements. Everything is about where you are in your progression. When you first come out as a say defense attorney. The, 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 the person answers the questions and then you go back over the same questions they just asked. Mm -hmm. That's how you start. And then as you get more comfortable, you begin to respond in your mind in real time with another question as they're asking the questions. Mm -hmm. That's what ends up happening. So for me, in closing, I don't, I don't say things like Maisie said this. Yeah. I say Maisie's a liar. And you know Maisie's a liar because of A, B, C, D. We don't even need to, we don't even need to reflect on what Maisie said, which was this, 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 and this. We know Maisie's a liar because this, 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 and this. So I'm going to get it in, but I'm not going to get it in like Maisie said X, and then Maisie said, and then Maisie said, because I need the jury to be entertained. The whole time, I need the jury to be entertained. That's the key to the whole thing. Jury has to be entertained. That's not that's not really my job, but that's what I believe my job is entertaining. Because if all the juries were entertained, when people got their jury summons, what would they say? Fantastic! I'm going to the show. But why does anybody say that? Because lawyers are bored, and nobody wants to go to jury service and say, like, "Oh, I gotta be away from my work. These lawyers are boring. This is stupid. That's why they don't want to go." But when you when they it's easy to get jurors, jurors pay attention, active, they're writing, they have more lively discussions in the back because of the energy that you have in the courtroom. Everything runs through